Hey, I'm John Cannell, and today on Preppy Kitchen, we're making delicious Italian donuts called Zeppoli. So let's get started. First off, I have one thing to measure, and that's the flour. These guys are like eclairs or cream puffs in that we're gonna make something in the sauce pot, add some flour, and stir our little hearts out. But I wanna have the flour ready, specifically 120 grams or one cup of all-purpose flour. My flour is measured out. Everything is gonna be happening in a small saucepan to begin with. So grab one, get it on your cooktop, and we're gonna start adding ingredients to it. Starting with half a cup of unsalted butter, I'm gonna cut it into tablespoon sized pieces just so it melts quickly. If you've never had zeppoli, there are so many variations. Every region in Italy has like their own spin on it, and some of them are even savory, like filled with anchovies. We're not making that today. We're gonna make one of the easiest varieties that I just so happen to love. One, because it comes together super fast, and two, oh my gosh, the taste is amazing. I'm gonna add half a cup of whole milk ricotta. This adds a lot of moisture and makes the inside so melt in your mouth tender. I also want half a cup of water, 120 ml. For sweetness, just a tablespoon of sugar. Grab a wooden spoon. And in case you're wondering, my book is available for pre-order now. There's links in the description box below and I am so excited to share 100 new recipes with you. It's actually over 100 as well as a lot of projects. All right, we're gonna take this over medium heat. We want the butter to melt and it's gonna come just to a boil, right? This is over medium heat. I really just need the butter to melt and everything to come together in a liquid. This is very similar to how you make a choux pastry, which is what you use for the eclairs, the cream puffs, the profitrol, the churro, all these other delicious things that I love. My butter's starting to melt. And by the way, these guys are just spooned into hot oil. There's no special tools to make them and they are beyond easy. But I will be trying one special variation where you pipe them in and uh, we'll see how that goes. I've never done that one before, but I'm curious. Now I'm gonna dump my flour in one cup. In you go. And here's where you're stir, stir, stirring your little heart out. This is gonna cook the flour, which is great because raw flour doesn't taste amazing. And you're gonna see this come into a ball. So as you cook and stir, this will join up into a ball and you'll see it's not really sticking to the pan anymore. It wants to stick to itself. You see how it's becoming smooth? It's not sticking to the pan. That's the texture you're looking for. Feels good, so strong on this side right now. And I'm gonna take this off heat Grab your stand mixer with a paddle attachment or a big bowl if you're using a hand mixer. This dough is gonna go right into our mixer. And here's the deal. The dough is very hot. I don't know if you can see the steam, but it's steaming up. And the best practice is gonna be to run your mixer on low for about a minute just to like get some of the heat out. So let that cool down because we're gonna add some eggs in right now. And if you added eggs into screaming hot dough, they might cook a little bit and you'd have like little burnt, like cooked egg pieces, which would be gross. Yeah. So steamy in there. Now I'm gonna add the eggs in one at a time and you'll see this dough really change texture. It goes from being like the most delicious Play-Doh ever to ribbony, silky amazingness. And like I said earlier, there are so many variations of these that you can try out. Just like cream puffs, a lot of these are filled with pastry cream or topped with pastry cream and then other things as well. And there's various shapes for various holidays. So if, like these guys are often made on St. Joseph's Day. There are all little variations and each of them are delicious. So I really encourage you to try them out and let me know what your favorite is in the comments if this is like a recipe that's dear to your heart. I added two in already, and you can see the egg is really binding it together and thinning it out. But, see how it just falls off the paddle? That lets me know it's not ready yet. Keep adding eggs. And you might need to scrape the bowl down once, but we'll see. Okay. Egg number three, even more silky now and ribbon-like. I'm gonna scrape the bowl down once just because you can see there's a total difference of texture on the bottom, all that stuff. 
does not have any egg in it. So we're gonna keep mixing. Last egg. Okay, this egg went in and I wanna show you just how amazing it is now. Ribbons will come off, so see that? It's very silky. I'm gonna let this dough mix for about two minutes just to really mix in and cool down a bit more. This becomes more manageable as it cools down, so you don't wanna work with it when it's really hot. But while it mixes, I'm gonna get a Dutch oven out, fill it with oil, and start heating it up. I want about two inches of oil. Unless you are like the fry king or queen, you're gonna want a candy thermometer because these guys need to be at 350. If the oil is too hot, the outside will get too brown and they'll be raw in the middle and it's not delicious when they're raw. They're gonna be melt in your mouth, but cooked through. My dough is silky smooth. So you have a couple options here. I'm gonna go the spoon route to start, which is just grabbing about a tablespoon of the dough, my shoe, and we're gonna push that out right into the hot oil. And you'll get like a rustic little delicious dollop. They don't have to look pretty. They're gonna be gorgeous golden brown, dusted with powdered sugar. But you can try using a triggered ice cream scoop. You can just make these little dollops. It's totally up to you. But you could also pipe it out, which we'll try too. Because a lot of the traditional versions are piped and then they're filled with a pastry cream. That just sounds plain delicious to me. It's like a cream puff, but maybe even better because of the ricotta in here. After a minute or so, we're gonna flip these over. Sometimes they'll flip themselves over, sometimes they won't. And we just wanna have them be golden brown on both sides. Okay, so I'm gonna try this out. I don't normally pipe these, but having fun in the kitchen is all about experimenting and sometimes that's on camera with you. <laughs> so I'm gonna pipe these out kind of like I would a churro, but um, these are normally in shapes that can hold some pastry cream. I have a close star tip, it's an 846, and I'm just gonna pipe a little nest onto a piece of parchment paper, and I'll do one that's a donut shape kind of. So here, I'm gonna drop the whole thing in and it should release from the paper. <laughs> Use that spider I kept talking about. Just submerge it. There we go, it already released from the paper. So that's actually a good system, just drop it in and then push the paper down and fairly quickly it'll release. And they actually look so much better and dare I say even lower stress because getting a nice dollop is way easier than it actually is. Getting a nice dollop sounds way easier than it is. <laughs> and I'm using a parchment paper, not a wax paper, because that would release wax in there. Mm. And just flip it over. And of course, they'll have a beautiful side and a bottom. <laughs> so <laughs> they're not gonna look the same on both sides. So it's actually even easier just to turn it upside down and plop it in like that. Just FYI. Okay, as soon as they're out of the fryer, we're going to dust these with powdered sugar. You could add pastry cream on top, or you could fill them up. It's totally up to you. Either way, they're gonna be delicious. Speaking of which. Mm. <laughs> it's like a fried cloud. It just dissolves on the palate. Perfectly sweet, so light inside, you wouldn't believe it. Oh my gosh, it might be my new favorite. I hope you get a chance to make this recipe, and if you like this video, check out my fried deliciousness playlist.